Frank from Man Lake, and here we are in the beginning of June up here in the Northeast, and we're going to talk about what we should be doing right now. Now, hopefully, you've got your brood nest going really well, you've got a good queen in there, and you've got your honey supers on. We just came out of our minor flow in May, and now June is our major flow. So this is where we need to make sure that we've got enough honey supers on and those bees have enough room. Hopefully we've taken care of any swarming thoughts the bees had, mitigated that, and now they're just concentrating on making honey. They will rarely swarm during a, a flow. They always prep before the flow. So if we've got them this far, we should be good. Now, if I'm running this hive and I've got my two brood boxes and I've got honey supers on there, I've got one on here now, but we could have more, you've got to stay on top of that. I like to come in, take a look in this box, see how much honey they're putting on, whether I have one, two, whatever I've got on there, and always give them room. In this case, I'm going to say this box is full, so I'm going to come back and take it off. I'm going to add a second, a new box, whether it's hopefully you've got some drawn comb, but if you don't, it's fine. You can use foundation. When they're bringing in nectar, they'll draw that out pretty quickly. I'm going to put that box back on top. I prefer to super from the bottom. Some people super from the top. Doesn't really matter. And we're going to put that back on. And we're just going to keep an eye and always give them room to store honey. Our flow is going to go to about mm, the first week of July. So we want to keep them putting honey up. Now, I've got a queen excluder on here. If you choose not to run with a queen excluder, that's fine. The bees actually will put up more honey without one. But we don't want brood up in our honey supers when we go to extract. So if you're going to do that, what I recommend is know the bee biology. 21 days to hatch, right, from an egg to an emerging bee. Well, the first week of June or so, I will come in and I'll get all the bees out of here, make sure the queen's not in my honey supers, and I'll put my queen excluder on and put those boxes back on. That way, by the time I pull these honey supers at the end of June, beginning of July, there's no more brood in here. They've come in and backfilled it with honey. Okay, so that's one of the things we've got to make sure we do in the month of June. This is our time to make honey. When it comes time to get these bees out of here, we want to use some sort of a bee escape. And I'll talk about that next month when we talk about pulling honey, extracting, and treating for mites. But this month, we just want to make sure they've got enough room to store that honey. Lastly, June is my month to make nukes to overwinter. We've got a lot of brood in here, and if we remember the biology, 21 days from egg to emerging bee, and then for that bee to become a forager, it's another 21 days. So if we're in the middle of June, by the time that brood that's being laid today emerges and goes out to forage, we're already middle to end of July, there's no more flow. So I use this opportunity to pull immature brood out of here, eggs, larvae, nurse bees, and make some nukes. Number one, it takes pressure off this hive. There's not as many resources that these bees have to feed, so they're putting that up as honey. And I made myself some nukes to start for overwintering. That's pretty much all we've got to do here in the Northeast in the month of June. Stay on top of those bees. Now we're making honey. Thanks, and uh, if there's anything you want to hear about, let us know. Please subscribe, and we'll see you in the beginning of July.